Uh, first and foremost, I think uh, creating a, a new organization that's focused on patient engagement and experience is all about leadership and changing culture. Uh, so as an organization, we've spent uh, quite, a bit of deal, quite a bit of time thinking about how we can change organizational culture and how we can start to influence uh, the culture of the broader healthcare system uh, by some of the things that we do. And I know that may not sound um, uh, very specific, uh, but it was very purposeful and uh, we have started uh, to create simple things uh, like uh, I guess one of the, the critical, and I'll give you a few examples of, of things that we've done to set the culture differently. Uh, a couple of years ago, we started a, a board-led process uh, about supporting people in their choices. So that was to fundamentally set the stage for the organization that our job was to support people in their choices, not make the choices for them. Uh, and the board went through that process and now as an organization, we have staff across the organization that understand our job is to support people in their choices instead of making their choices. So that's one example. Another great example is, uh, and again, they're, they're simple things. We've been working, obviously I think you know that we work with a, a large group of uh, service provider partners in delivering our care. We brought that whole group together last year to make a joint declaration to improve the experience of our clients together um, and have picked some very significant projects to focus on over the next couple of years that are measurable, that include patient engagement. And a really great example of one is uh, something called changing the conversations. Uh, and we are uh, doing some small tests of change now where we've gone out and just simply changed the smallest things that we're doing with clients. So for example, uh, when our personal support providers arrive at a client's home, instead of telling the client what we are here to do, the first thing that they say is, I'm here for two hours today, what's the most important thing for you? Uh, midway through the visit, uh, they say to the individual, I'm only going to be here, you know, I'm here for about another hour. Is there anything else that I can do for you? And then at the end of the day, uh, they say, I'm just about to leave. Is there anything important that you want me to tell the rest of your team? Uh, again, you hear from people that people get very worried that you're going to hear that clients might want the sun and the moon, but what they want are very simple things. And give you an example, could you please put my earrings on? My daughter's coming over today, and that's really important for me to have those on. Or could you make me a tuna sandwich? So again, the simplest of things, but that speaks to culture. And if you're going to change the behavior of thousands of individuals who, in, who in, uh, interact with clients on a day-to-day -day basis, we have to look at systemic, uh, simple projects that can, can permeate out uh, throughout, uh, throughout our entire organization. The, the other thing I think is, and I've spoken of this before, you have to be brave enough uh, to actually ask for people's experience and the having your say, choosing your way a project that we did with the Change Foundation, I call it a bit of the opening your kimono. Um, and you have to be brave enough to do that. You have to uh, be brave enough to let people take a peek in uh, and tell you what doesn't work for you. We're also, you know, the, heard some comments this morning about the use of surveys. Uh, we have started to do very population-based specific surveys. So we are actually looking at different populations and going out and interviewing them about their experience and taping them. So some of the things that you've actually heard. But one, one of the foundational pieces I think is quite important for the Toronto Central CCC and all 14 CCCs are gonna be doing this. People talk about home care like it's a homogeneous population or client grouping. It's not, it's very heterogeneous. We have many, many populations and you can assume that the patient experience or the patient engagement or the patient needs of one group is the same as the other. Uh, so we moved uh, last year to move to a population-based approach to delivering care for our population, for our client uh, uh, groups. And so now you have several different populations and we're able to engage with those, those clients in a very different, much more meaningful way than we were in, in a more generalist model in the past. So when I, think, when, it, when I think about how we're going to engage differently with patients, I see it on multiple levels. So first and foremost, it's on that frontline level and the description of changing the conversations and instead of assuming what a patient or client wants from us, we're beginning to ask what's most important to you in the time that we're here or what's most important to you. Uh, at, the, at the service design or how our programs are structured, how we operate, how we deliver service, uh, we're starting to bring in uh, different, again, for different populations. So I'll give you an example, we have uh, our children's program. Uh, we brought parents in to redesign how we would actually deliver that service to them. Uh, and that's had phenomenal results. Uh, 
but we are also hoping to change the level of engagement on the system level. And uh, you, we mentioned a, an example like the virtual ward. The virtual ward, in terms of connecting the different systems of care, I think the CCCs can play an incredible role in terms of following a patient across the system uh, and helping to have their voices heard uh, and understood uh, in, a, in a continuous way. And uh, virtual ward, there's, there's several other examples. We have the Integrated Care Project for uh, the elderly, which is starting to connect uh, primary care, uh, rehab, community support services, CCAC services, hospital services. How do you wrap those services around uh, in a very different way than past? So uh, fundamentally, when I think about caregivers, I think as an entire healthcare system, including my own CCAC, uh, we have a predominant focus on the client. Um, and while we include the caregiver, we usually think of the caregiver in terms of the resources or how they may be helpful, instead of what are their fundamental needs, what's most important to them. So again, we're starting to change the dialogue with caregiver. What's most important to you? What do you need to be successful in your role? What could we do differently that would be more helpful for you? Uh, and we've uh, gotten some res remarkable uh, interest from our caregivers, both in terms of how to redesign services, not necessarily for the client or the patient, because the patient needs to tell us that, but hearing the caregiver's voice to help us redesign the service so it meets the needs of the caregivers. Uh, and that's been, a, uh, I think, a really eye-opening um, uh, experience for us. I, well, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you one example uh, of something, and this is actually uh, happened a, 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 a few years ago, uh, but the whole idea of home chemotherapy for uh, children uh, and parents, and the thoughts in the system were that parents really wanted the convenience and the caregivers uh, wanted the convenience of having that in the home and it would be easier on the child. Uh, we did a, a significant study whereby we understood, truly understood what the needs of the caregivers and the needs of the, the children were, and in fact, they wanted it more convenient, closer to home, but actually they didn't want that, their, their home was a safe place for many, and they didn't actually want that service in the home. Uh, particularly, the parents really wanted their, their home to be that place that was safe for their children and their siblings. Um, so again, listening to families and listening to caregivers and their contributions has been um, uh, very helpful. There's also a lot of work that we're doing uh, with other caregiver support groups. Um, there is some work being done at Mount Sinai Hospital, so we're partnering with them again in truly uh, trying to understand what the, the caregivers' needs are and starting to redesign services around them. I think, I think there's a fundamental difference in the environments and uh, I think the, the patient-based design is going to influence both, uh, maybe at a different pace. Uh, the difference between the home uh, and an institutional setting is that uh, the client or the patient has a lot more control in their home setting. We don't control who comes into the house. We don't control what kind of home they live in. We don't control the temperature. We don't control uh, generally uh, the environment, which is very different than, than institutional settings. Uh, but uh, what I think is the same is that people want control and choice. Uh, over their services, how they're delivered, um, what types of services that they get. And I think if the focus is on better understanding those in both of those environments and then figuring out how we bridge the gap between the two in those transition periods uh, of, of hospital to home or home to, to uh, long-term care, those are the opportunities really to provide that continuity in experience-based design and, and really push us a lot further ahead than we are now.